Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, December 5th. Um, yeah, just to make sure, I'm looking at my laptop. Today is December 5th, Tuesday, and a um, couple more days before I head off for my own family holiday. And uh, this podcast is, again, uh, quite impromptu. I haven't have many points written down uh, to to guide me. I'm just looking at something that I wrote in on my laptop, but the topic is a little bit different and it's meant for someone else. And so I want to talk about um, one aspect of ethical tourism or one example of how we can be more ethical in the tourism industry that is that is to uh, better facilitate climate adaptation practices in the tourism industry we all understand what more or less what climate adaptation is to adapt to a changing environment to adapt to uh, to a uh, to a changing tourism environment, the tourism operating environment has changed, and it no longer quite looks the same thirty, forty, fifty years ago. Even if we look at how tourism was done twenty years ago, we must say that um, uh, you know one of the things that is due to climatic changes, due to uh, pressing, and very urgent changes put put uh, put on business practices uh, over the last maybe two decades in the in the area of um, responding to climate change the tourism industry is now having a, a rather different dif- uh, operating environment so in the tourism industry we are talking more and more about climate mitigation and climate adaptation and as you can probably guess, I focus more on adaptation, considerably more on adaptation, because to me, that is the slightly less straightforward topic. Um, that is the, the more tricky of the two. I tend to feel that mitigation is um, fairly, fairly more straightforward. Adaptation is a little bit harder or complex to understand. And in the tourism industry, because the tourism industry is culture specific, um, as in practices done in one place may differ from another, from another, and so adapt adapting to climate change in different parts of a country itself could also be slightly or somehow different. And uh, for tourism to start. Focusing more on uh, how it it facilitates climate adaptation, I think is a very ethical thing to do, although it's not easy. It's not going to be easy and straightforward. Um, So I used to talk a little bit about uh, intangible cultural heritage and climate adaptation. I still do from time to time. The tourism industry has to quickly think of how it it can adopt or facilitate more practices that uh, that are in line with climate adaptation tourism has a big role to play when it comes to uh, when it comes to um, reducing and 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 making places better in the context of climate change you know uh, tourism industry is not only a consumer-driven industry because we're no longer in the 1970s and 1980s when the consumer was leading in or influencing a lot of things that we do. As time went by, we are now seeing that the tourism industry is actually turning into an industry where the consumer has to be educated and advised on what to do and what cannot be done on how he or she should behave, on how his or her trip can better better meet the expectations, the desires on, and the aspirations of local people, the local destination and the local people. 
So having said that, this leaves a very good space to attack or exploit in the sense of uh, using tourism to to better facilitate uh, climate adaptation. Uh, some places will find it harder to adapt to to a changing climate. Some places will find that it's, it's harder, it's more difficult and perhaps also more complicated um, when it comes to climate adaptation. Some places may find it harder and more complicated because of reasons like, uh, like uh, lack of financial support, lack of uh, certain resources that will, that will be required. Uh, lack of uh, lack of other kinds of support like technology, like expertise. So it's a combination uh, of uh, different different reasons why climate adaptation may be more difficult and more complicated for some places. And the tourism industry is is um, is perhaps one industry that climate adaptation is not uh, contrary to, you know. What I'm trying to say is climate adaptation may well work for the better of the tourism industry. So if we look at what tourists do and how they do and why they do what they do um, and how they do, yeah, as, as I've just said, we might want to consider uh, drawing drawing a drawing a link between that and uh, how the tourism industry can play a part in adapting or helping places adapt to climate change because what tourists do um, and how they do what they do change or changes in the absence of uh, resources that used to used to be uh, used to be available which is now maybe more restricted or, or less available. There could be things that the tourist uh, has to be told is no longer quite possible to do. Uh, there could be another way of doing the same thing uh, because of the resource inavaila- unavailability. So we live in a, in a changed tourism industry and, and, and uh, people... Uh, buying the experience that is the traveler or the tourist must know that. So I think tourism, the tourism industry playing a big role in climate adaptation is is no is no is not something very complicated to to imagine. Um, the the connection between tourism industry and climate adaptation is probably going to get more and more ob- obvious as we all start talking about this more and more. And uh, we are not saying that that the whole process of tourism contributing to adaptation is simple or, or very straightforward. No, we're, we're not saying that. What we're saying is, uh, is, is not a very complicated relationship, tourism industry and climate adaptation. It's just that we have never really thought about the connection between these two things. We never really imagined how tourism can play a part until maybe fairly recently. And that makes tourism more ethical when we are able to achieve that. And that's uh, quite a big part of uh, what responsible tourism is about. I wish you a good holiday period yourself. You don't have to be traveling overseas to to tell someone that you are enjoying the holiday season. Have a restful Christmas period and uh, I'll think of more topics to talk about in the ensuing weeks and the next few months. Merry Christmas and a happy restful holiday period. Bye-bye.